Welcome to a series of MinIO videos called RAID, Replication, and Erasure Code, where we compare three technologies that are used to protect data from storage failures. In this video, we will discuss RAID, which is an acronym for Redundant Arrays of Independent Disks. RAID can be used to protect data, to increase performance, and to join drives together into a single larger drive. RAID is pervasive today. For example, RAID mirroring is commonly used to protect the boot drives on most servers. In this video, we will explore various RAID configurations and see how we can benefit from their use. Before we jump into RAID, let's consider the many types of storage hardware failures that we're trying to avoid. Well, there's cooling fans, power supplies, server memory, and software crashes that can take down servers. Hard disks experience head crashes, motor freezes, bearing failures, firmware, electronics, and media failures. SSDs are actually more reliable than hard disk drives, but they too are affected by firmware and electronics and media failures. And you can even lose data because of cosmic rays. Yes, the energy from cosmic rays can stripe silicon storage devices and cause individual bits to flip. So years of hard one experience shows you just can't trust the storage hardware. So what are we going to do if we want to protect our data? Well, we're going to use RAID. So let's see how RAID is designed to deal with storage hardware failures. As we start to explore RAID options, I first want to point out that RAID is a standalone, single node solution for protecting data. For RAID all by itself cannot protect against server failures, but it does do a good job of using striping, replication, and parity calculations to protect the data that's stored within the server. So how do you add RAID to a storage server? Well, one way is to purchase an add-in PCI card with a hardware RAID controller. These days, most operating systems include software RAID controllers, and software RAID is only possible because server CPUs have become so powerful. While both hardware and software RAID are good options, software RAID seems to have better manageability tools, and the performance really is good. So now that we know how to add RAID to a server, let's jump into the details of RAID with a discussion of RAID 0. RAID 0 combines multiple disks together into a single logical drive. RAID 0 is also called a stripe set, or a striped volume. Data is written by striping across all the disks in the RAID set. RAID 0 provides us with two benefits. It increases performance, and it has the ability to create large logical volumes out of many smaller disks. However, RAID 0 does not provide any type of data redundancy, and thus a failure of one disk can make entire stripes of data unreadable. RAID 1 is the simplest way to secure data, and it does this by mirroring disks. Most servers use RAID 1 to mirror two boot drives and thus protect the operating system. But then how does RAID 1 survive disk failures? Well, RAID 1 can survive a single disk failure, and it can even survive multiple disk failures, but it cannot survive the failure of two mirrored disks. RAID 5 and RAID 6 are mostly the same and that they use a parity drive to protect multiple data drives. If you understand how one works, then you'll get them both. As with RAID 0, RAID 5 stripes data across a large number of disk drives, but it also writes a parity checksum on another drive. The parity checksum is used to protect the stripe of data from disk and media failures. RAID 6 differs only in its use of two parity drives. If a disk fails, then the missing data can be mathematically reconstructed using the surviving disks and the parity checksums. And with two parity checksums, RAID 6 provides a higher level of durability, one that can survive two disk failures. With RAID 5 and RAID 6, we achieve two storage goals. Parity gives us protection from hardware failures, and data striping provides performance. Once you understand the basic RAID constructs, then you can understand hybrid RAID. The most common hybrid RAID combines mirroring, RAID 1, with striping, RAID 0, to give us RAID 0 plus 1 and RAID 1 plus 0. RAID 0 plus 1 adds mirroring to a striped volume. It takes one RAID 0 volume and mirrors it to another RAID 0 volume. Data that is written to one RAID 0 volume is mirrored to the other RAID 0 volume. And RAID 1 plus 0 stripes data across mirrored volumes. Both of these give us the benefits of RAID 0, which is performance, and RAID 1, which is protection from disk failures. And it doesn't end there. 
There are other advanced RAID models like RAID 5 plus 0 and RAID 6 plus 0, which stripe data across multiple RAID 5 or RAID 6 volumes. Now that we've taken a look at how RAID protects data, it's also time to consider the limits of RAID. The first is high availability. RAID is meant only to protect the disk drives located within a server. If the server fails, RAID cannot protect us. It's not HA, and by itself it cannot fail over to another server. The second is RAID rebuild times. With increased drive capacity comes longer rebuilding times. As a result, the storage will run in a degraded mode for a long time, which can affect production workloads. Plus, the longer it takes to rebuild the disk, the more we are at risk of encountering another failing disk or a media failure. And the third is scalability. RAID cannot scale across multiple storage servers. When you need to store hundreds of petabytes of data, you will need lots of servers. To protect data stored at this scale, we'll use distributed er replication or distributed erasure code. Thank you for watching this video on RAID, part of a series of videos on data protection called RAID, Replication, and Erasure Code. In summary, RAID is a durable and battle-tested model of data protection which is used by many legacy storage systems. However, other methods of data protection work better when you're storing large volumes of high-velocity data, like hundreds or even thousands of petabytes of data, the DAME being used today with analytics and machine learning applications. To store data at that scale, we need to employ replication or erasure code techniques, and these will be covered in the next videos in this series. For more information, visit our website at min.io or connect to us via email, GitHub, Twitter, and LinkedIn.